up, people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we are coming at you each and every week with a fresh service to debrief in an effort to send biblical truth. And what better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm your host for the day, Mark Francis. And again, joining us is Alicia Battaglia. How are you? I'm well. Good and, yep, excellent. And our senior pastor, Mark Carey. Greetings. How are you? Very good. Very Irish day. Happy Pat's day. Wearing my green. Mm -hmm. It's a little (laughs) kind of the camo color green. I have no green on. Yeah. And with an Irish thing like Batelia. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Well, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's a great green day and we have a lot to discuss. But, you know, it is kind of a, a unique situation. I'm in the hot seat here where normally Caleb Pearson sits. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know if there's anything that we want to share with him, but I know he is excited to, to not be here probably. But I, I do have something I want to share with Caleb. Um, he's not here, obviously. Yes. Um, and and um, I, I, I'm I'm. I'm Irish descent, Kerry. Okay. Uh, my great 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 grandfather Francis Kerry came here from Ireland in, in 1809, and um, uh, my great grandfather he was very proud of his Irish descent uh, uh, heritage, I guess. He married a very um, a cultured lady, Delia Kerry, and uh, she was an educator and she was a poet. So somewhere around the turn of the last century, she uh, and I'm going to regale you this morning perfect with a poem that she wrote oh, nice. uh, pa- uh patrick o'reilly so i st patrick's day i thought i just grabbed this this morning before i came in so here we go and this is for caleb do you get a chance to do it with an accent also? well you know yeah. I'll, 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 I'll give it a whirl <laughs> all right okay here we go patrick patrick o'reilly was a fine irish lad a great strapping handsome young fellow with teeth white as pearls red cheeks and black eyes and a laugh that was hearty and mellow. He was proud of his strength, proud of his name, said his blood was as good as an earl's. But one weakness he had, to sad to relate, poor Pat was afraid of the girls. <laughs> Caleb. <clears throat> Just a swish of a petticoat coming his way would set his heart all in a flutter. And if a lass spoke to the silly gossoon, all he'd do was stammer and stutter. Now Patrick had heard of a wonderful stone not far from the Lake Killarney. A stone that possessed miraculous power and was found at the castle of Blarney. It was said that if once you but touched the stone of such wonderful power, you'd be gifted with speech that all hearts would win and could talk by the yard of the hour. So Patrick set out with his frock on his back, his shillelagh clutched tight in his fist, but dad, oh, no girl will e'er be afraid when this Blarney stone once I have kissed. So he traveled all night, and he traveled all day, till he found the stone that he sought, and then quickly he smacked it. All right, he said now, the girls had better look out. Then back to his home, he, he hied once at him at once, all patience his new power to try. Resolved he'd make love to the first pretty girl that came within sight of his eyes, when it happened to be that time of year, when they hold the great Donnabrook Fair, and the lads and lasses from far and from near were sure to be all gathered there. And so away to the fair went Pat in a rush, and maids by the scores did he see. And he boldly walked up with never a blush, and talked to them fine as could be. After this, no problem had Pat with the girls. He talked to them more noon and night and was never so happy or when with some lass. As for Blarney, he could sure do it right. Now, bashful young men, the moral is plain. If a tongue that runs smoothly you'd own, just pluck up your courage, step up like a man, and kiss this small, smooth Blarney stone. Patrick yeah. O'Reilly. All right. I have a question. What is a shillelagh? A shillelagh is a is a walking stick. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yes, yes. And have you been to Ireland? Have you kissed the Blarney Stone yourself? I have not. I have no need to. Yes, that is exactly <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> well, so 
Caleb sip, typically sits here in this hot seat, and mm-hmm. he is the host, and he owns this podcast, and I appreciate him for that. Which, by the way, in the intro, did not say what is up, my people, because I don't think you guys are my people. These are Caleb's people. <laughs> but, you know, maybe he tried to play a prank on, on you one time. I don't know if you remember. Like if if you weren't, I don't, here. I don't hold grudges. So okay. I don't, I don't remember those things. Okay. So if, if <laughs> maybe, maybe we'd go up to Caleb and the next 10 people to see Caleb this week, if you see him or talk to him on the phone, maybe he needs the reminder of the Irish poem. There, there you go. And go if, kiss the Blarney stone, yeah. Caleb. And so if, see if he's listening. Oh, yeah. Although <laughs> that's good. I, I think, I, I think he already has. Yeah, but we, yeah. We, we won't talk about that. We will see. Absolutely. <laughs> but we have a lot to talk about, not necessarily <clears throat> yes. Irish topics. But first and foremost, obviously, we're living in a day and age where things are in upheaval. And so we want to have this podcast be something that is encouraging to to refresh our minds on on the gospel and and who God is and kind of dig into the, the sermon. But um, I just, Mark, wanted to ask you if you had any specific thoughts for our congregation, for FBC, for, you know, how to live day by day this week um, with the coronavirus, with specific kind of things that, you know, what should we need to be thinking about? Yeah. Well, in all life, I think there's, there's a horizontal perspective that we have to have, and there's a vertical perspective. Horizontally, yeah, we have to be careful. We, we have to be careful of, uh, of uh, the people we come in contact with. We have to be wise. We have to, we, we have, uh, living in our home, a, a 93-year-old lady, and, and uh, you know, if Lisa got sick or something like that, I don't, I, don't, you know, I don't know what we would do. So you have to be somewhat wise in your, um, and, and we're certainly hearing that from government officials and, and health officials. Um, all, but also horizontally, these are great times to um, convey um, um, the victory we have in Christ to c- convey the hope that we have, and uh, uh, while everybody else maybe in the world is um, gripped with fear, um, uh, as Christians we don't have that peripheral of cast out fear. Uh, he's not given us a spirit of fear, uh, but a power and sound mind. So uh, horizontally, um, w- we need to reach out to people um, properly. Uh, we have to be wise in how we do that. Um, and we're here at Fellowship Bible Church. We're working on ways that we can actually assist people um, that way in, um, in in needs that they may have. Vertically, um, we stay anchored uh, to to the Lord, and right. um, so yep. keep the vertical and the horizontal in line, and knowing that um, this too will pass. Uh, like the old preacher said, my favorite verse in the Bible: "It came to pass. It didn't come to stay. It <laughs> came is, to pass." That is true. So. Um, yeah, in, you know, it's funny because I, I am engaging with people from our church on a daily basis, and it's neat to see the body of Christ, even in, in a store shopping yesterday, running into somebody who said, you know what, we have these times where we can just put our hope in Christ. You know, mm-hmm. and, and people were hearing right. our conversation. Yeah. And so just having somebody say that to me right. is encouraging right. to know that we can be yeah. a light in the community just when we can live out our faith and verbalize that. Right. And then you uh, offered him your bag of toilet paper. I didn't have any. There was none <laughs> in none in the store. But but absolutely. And, yeah. and that's that's the example. And you know, Alicia, you're part of our community group where we actually did meet last night, mm-hmm. but we did remotely mm-hmm. um, through the digital um, method of Zoom. And, it, and it's neat. But there, it's, there's a big learning curve s- specifically for me. I, yeah. <laughs> I had mm. it, but I got there. And, and you know, it, and it's not the same, you know. And so just like our worship service that we posted this past weekend, yeah. it, it, it doesn't replace the the corporate gathering or the getting together of people. But we but have really technology. To see everybody's faces and to be able to dialogue and interact and still gather even though it was virtually both yeah. both of you have uh, children at home yes. yep how, how is that going well it's not really my life hasn't really changed a whole lot because my kids are i'm i'm at right. home with them anyway yeah. and i educate them at home so we're still doing school <laughs> much to their demise see, they're used to being home <laughs> mine aren't yeah and so they're okay. already going stir crazy okay. i mean even when they were in school on friday and going through the weekend, just that very first day of Monday yesterday, was all right. Where are we gonna go? We're we gonna do. We're like we gotta hold tight, guys. Let's yeah. just hang in there, okay? Yeah. And so it's yeah, gonna well, be a little no bit of a challenge. Yeah, you know, and that's that's got to be hard for parents who um, 
if, if both are working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and this is putting a strain, obviously, all the way around. Uh, again, we need to get anchored. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's a great time to memorize well, and some too, scripture. For people who know of needs where maybe somebody who is a single parent or both parents are at work and they need help with ch- child care to offer that um, as a way to serve and love your neighbors and other members of the body of Christ as well. Yep. Yep. It's a need. Yep. And I would, I would say keep, keep um, looking at our fbcva.life um, slash coronavirus uh, webpage. It's up, being updated, and there's, there'll be things that uh, we can get involved with in congregational care. and, and Absolutely. Those things. Daily, we will be updating things, and we're going to be putting out just different forms. If you are willing to help, you know, contact us. I'm um, going to have you just kind of let us know who you are and wh- how you can help. Um, there's going to be options on the website to go to for that. We're going to be putting out more tools and notifications to different groups that are meeting of different ideas of how you can meet digitally and remotely. And the high schoolers and college students who are looking for something mm. to do, what an opportunity for you to go to someone's home and serve and help with the kids. Yeah. This is, this is a way to redeem the time, not stream and stream another video and whatever, but get out and serve these families yeah. who need help. Yeah, if you find yourself having more time in your hands, instead of streaming the latest, beta, latest greatest show to binge watch, you know, how can we plug into it, A, God's word, and then B, help serve other people, yeah. instead of just sitting back and hungering down. Yeah. I mean, we gotta be smart, because there's ditches you can fall into. You can say this, you know, this virus is just, yeah. uh, it's overblown, it's overreacting, I'm gonna go live my life or you can live in fear. And so how can we live in the middle um, to help serve others and grow? And and without being overly mystical or super spiritually sounding, I do think this is what walking by the Spirit involves. I mean, a relationship with the Lord. So we we go to him in prayer, say, Lord, how how do you want me to respond? Who who can, you you see maybe a need. If we're connected with the Lord and we're going before him, presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice, it, this is not just a one-way thing. It's, it's. I mean, the Lord is going to communicate to us. I mean, that's what he yeah. does. And so the Spirit of God will direct us. And then it's an obedient walk of faith that, uh, that um, you know, if we, if we go before him, he will direct our paths. And we just have to be attuned to him, listen to him, and uh, and trust him. Yep, that's what it's about. Yep. And I think this might become full circle. If we end our conversation with that same thought, yep. we'll be doing well. But let's, let's dive in because, you know, there was a sermon that was presented. We're still in Romans, in Romans 3. And, you know, I wanted to, first of all, ask both of you guys two separate questions. But, Mark, I'll start with you. And then, Alicia, I want to get your, your reactions to the sermon as well. But, Mark, were there certain things that you really felt like that you didn't touch on that you could have touched on? That's a standard question that we like to yeah. ask you. Well, the, the, the key word in that the passage that we looked at was this word propitiation. Right. Uh, NIV, it's... it's uh, what was it, atonement cover or the, the 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 atoning sacrifice the atone the atoning sacrifice propitiation hilasterion is a Greek word and and um, yeah I would have liked to have developed that much more because you think of you get this idea of a God who needs to be satisfied that that a God of wrath is it's like his love is dammed up and and when Christ died on the cross it tore that dam down and his love is, and grace is now free to flow hmm. his character. Of, of holiness and righteousness keeps that back as it were in its full fullness and th- and there are images that some people can pick up on improperly but you think of of capricious vindictive um, pagan deities you, you know you got these these uh, which were certainly there in the in the Old Testament times you think of Greek mythology you think of these gods that uh, get um, absolutely um, um, furious with their worshipers because they did something wrong and so they're angry and they're throwing lightning bolts you know and they're, they're doing all this stuff <laughs> okay. and uh, and then so the, the the frightened worshipers oh my you know we and so they come we've got to and they uh, kill the fatted calf or whatever and they they to to quiet the temper of this of this wrathful vengeful capricious god right. you know and, and those images that are there and if they do it just right and they do it enough He'll, he'll, um, you know, his his wrath will subside and and he'll be appeased and you know th- those images, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and, excuse, and those images were certainly there 
in the Old Testament mindset. Right. So um, some people, uh, theologians, don't like that concept or fear that concept and say, surely that's not what that word meant and surely that's not you know, propitiate, can't mean that. And so they, they smooth it out a little bit. Hmm. The problem is um, all throughout the Old Testament, you see a, a God of wrath. I, 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 you can't mis, mistake, mistake that. There is something like 20 words in the, in the Hebrew language for wrath or anger that are used in the Old Testament. And there is something like almost 600 occurrences in the Old Testament uh, of, of God... Um, and his wrath. And for instance, in um, Psalm 78, verse 21, it says, Therefore the Lord heard and was full of wrath. And a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also mounted against Israel, because they did not believe in God. They did not trust in his salvation. Hmm. Joshua 22, verse 18, If you rebel against the Lord today, he will be angry with the whole congregation of Israel tomorrow. If you rebel against God today, he's going to be angry with you tomorrow. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 14 through 15 says, You shall not follow other gods, any of the gods of the peoples who surround you. For the Lord your God in the midst of you is a jealous God. Otherwise, the anger of the Lord your God will be kindled against you, and he will wipe you off the face of the earth. Wow. Yeah. Um, this is all over the Old Testament. Right. Um, uh, but again, we, we need to put this in a proper perspective of a God who is holy and righteous. Um, Leon Morris in his book Apostolic Preaching of the Cross said this it is clear that in the Old Testament the anger of God may be expected to be visited upon any uh, perpetrator of any sin God made men for himself he made them so that they would be his people and live in accordance with his commandments and when they failed to do so they inevitably aroused his settled opposition his wrath so Again, God, in the strongest manner, as a holy God, um, does not put up with sin. It's, it goes against his character. And we've seen that all, all through Romans leading up to That's this. That's right. I think having these several weeks unfold, we can have a better picture of what, if you try to put on God's lenses of the world, and we use this word propitiation yeah. to see what really it took to be satisfied, that was one thing that stood out to me was that there is this idea of we look at things so much, so much through our eyes, yeah. and that redeeming word or the the redemption word just before that passage is looking at it through our eyes. Yeah. And here, the very next verse on in verse twenty five is whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation, and that's yeah. that's yeah. His lenses. And right. so we see that now, having gone through Romans one and two, seeing. That sin that we have. And you can't get any more public than Jesus hanging on a cross. Right, right. And you, like what you were saying, Mark, the redemption is the manward focus. Propitiation is the Godward focus. And his character is holy. He hates sin and it has to be punished. And that was one of the things that you brought out with the, the mercy seat, mm -hmm. the lid, the, the covering in the Ark of the Covenant. And the sh the splattering of blood, and how Jesus mm -hmm. has become our mercy seat. That's right. Yep. And I thought that was so beautiful, and it just ties into you know many of us are probably going through the Bible chronologically right now, and we're in the Old Testament, so it's very bloody, mm -hmm. and it's painful uh, to read, and um, but there is there is a a bigger picture of this holy God who is performing a beautiful work of mm -hmm. redemption. Yeah. And the, the fact that he, he knows you know, from the Old Testament that what his son, Jesus, is going to do and be. That's the eternal plan of, of redemption. Yeah, the wrath of God is not the last word, right. which is what Paul is going through here. Right. Uh, you know his his the the mercy seat the 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 grace and the mercy of God um, is um, is is where we end up then uh, here in in, in Romans uh, chapter know, three. I got to ask again because <clears throat> because we do have our community group the night before we meet some certain things come up and one one word that did stand out was that public 
display, you know, and, and so I'm curious, there's certain words that you can't touch on in a, in a 40 minute sermon, which I fully get. And I'm curious if you had any thoughts on whom God displayed publicly. This is the New American Standard Version as a propitiation. Yeah, well, like I just said, it's I, I, you can't get more public than a crucified Jesus. Yeah. So it, this was a display to everyone. Um, uh, uh, you know, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And it, 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 as Jesus uttered those words on the cross, um, you can't get more, if you remember the movie, The Passion of the Christ, yeah. um, the bloody scene. I mean, this was a bloody sacrifice. John the Baptist had said when he first, um, at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, as he was going to baptize Jesus, he said, look, behold the Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. Well, what was a lamb? It was the sacrificial lamb that takes away the sin of the world. It means so much more to people then in that time. That's right. Than, than it does for yeah. us today. So he's publicly, uh, you, you know, in the Old Testament, when you, as a, as, a, as a worshiper, you would have to come and bring your sacrifice. You, the Old Testament, um, book of Leviticus, the, the rules of the Old Testament was you came, you brought your, your animal, you slit the animal's throat. Mm-hmm. You did all that. Mm-hmm. Then the, the priest didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Right. You did that, and then the priest took over right. and, and splattered it. And, and laying your hand it, on the Yeah, and conveying the, the sin. Mm-hmm. So yes. um, uh, that's very public. Um, everybody was doing that. The, 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 uh, the, the, the tabernacle where the Ark of the Covenant, where the sacrifices were made uh, on the brazen altar, that was in the center of Jewish life. Um, you had four, uh, you had four tribes or three tribes here, three tribes here, three tribes here, three tribes over here, north, east, south, and they all focused around that tabernacle, that altar, and smoke ascended daily. Right. So it was, it was. So it was a daily reminder. A daily reminder, public, uh, visible, mm-hmm. and as Christ is hanging on the cross, um, everybody should know <clears throat> this is the slain of the Lamb that will satisfy. Um, a holy God and avert his wrath. Yeah. And so that's the it, picture, I think. It begs the question, it's a neat segue, because as the passage <clears throat> continues, then it, it, it shares that because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. Mm-hmm. And so unpack that a little bit more for us, this idea of the blanket of the Old Testament, of kind of how the, the sins that were committed <clears throat> and how that sacrificial system appeased God but it wasn't until Christ came until really... Right. Well, it's Hebrews 10, 3 and 4 says, um, it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats hmm. to take away sin. So, That's shocking yeah, for, it's, for that time period. So the word that was used in the Old Testament was this atonement, was, this, um, was the covering of sin. And um, You used the word tar yeah. in, in the sermon, and that's such an interesting picture to think that there, the, the sins are being covered. They're at that point not fully paid for uh, yeah. until Jesus dies on the cross. Did the ultimate sacrifice? Yes. That's right. Um, so they're 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 kind of s- stuck underneath that right, tarp right. Until, until that comes. And by the way, something else that uh, didn't get into and couldn't in a, in a sermon is that those sacrifices in the Old Testament, those sacrifices were only um, designed for sins that were done and that the word in, in, in maybe the King James version, and I think it's Numbers 15, only for sins that were done unwittingly, hmm. unknowingly. Hmm. Yeah. So if you did something knowingly, not that you would do that, I should turn over here to Mark. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> if you did something defiantly or knowingly, there was no sacrifice. Hmm. Th- th- there was nothing in the law code. So you take David, when he sinned with the, the sin with Bathsheba, mm. and he comes in Psalm 32 or Psalm 51, um, sacrifice uh, and, and, and offerings thou hast not required. Thou, thou, because there was none. Mm. He did that knowingly. Right. He, all he could do is cast himself on, the, on a merciful God to say, forgive me. Now, God did. Right. But um, so sacrifices were only good well, for too, sins he done. mercy not sacrifice. That's right. So so he the, he, the broken and contrite spirit, uh, God will not despise. Um, it, God always looks at the heart. Now, he did institute this these formal religious things uh, the, the, in the Old Testament, 
But like the writer of Hebrews said, that old covenant was merely a shadow of the things that were to come. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we have to be careful, even in our own post-cross life, not to be doing things religiously that right. might, quote, appease God. Well, if I just read my Bible a little bit more in the morning, maybe I'll get that job promotion. Uh, for, well, you know, how, how we, we play that game. You, you <clears throat> touched on that a little bit, but the, the boasting part of the passage, mm. um, in verse 27, then what becomes of our boasting is that it, it is excluded. It's, there's none. There is no boasting uh, whatsoever for us. And that brought me over to 1 Corinthians mm-hmm. 4, 7. What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? It's, and prior, he's, we are justified by his grace as a gift. It's mm-hmm. a free gift that's been given to us. And so we have no room to boast. And there's, he's, he's one God, it goes on, he's, he's one God. He's the God of the Jews and the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. The law, fulfilling the law, you know, marking things off, checking your checklist does not make yeah. the cut. You don't make the cut. Yeah. There's no boasting. Man is totally excluded from this, which which is different in that old from those old pagan deity mindsets where the man has to, oh, I got to do this, this, and this, and so they make the sacrifices. That never was in God, who is the offended party, actually takes care of his own offense. Right. By bringing us the lamb, we had nothing. He is the 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 great um, high priest who who um, handles it all, who does all the sacrificing. It's his very life that he gives. I mean, man is a is a removed. Um, he 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 is the sinful party in all this, but he's removed from it totally. It's all of God, and so you're right. There's no boasting. Uh, you had uh, yeah, I had uh, something that I. Before I went to sleep last night, I was reading, this is a book by Paul Miller, and um, a couple chapters before, he references the the book, a play, musical, Les Miserables. Hmm. Um, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with that, um, I suggest you, it's excellent. Would, it's would one you, of my favorites. Shall we break out a little duet on the prayer? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No, I'm okay. Um, but, <laughs> I don't want to be like Russell Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <clears throat> Hugh, but, Jack, Hugh Jackman, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, good. Sorry. It was really well done. But so I'm going to just read this little section here because I just thought it was so good and how well it tied in with everything. But he writes, justification by faith stabilizes our restless selves outside of ourselves in the cross of Christ. In Les Miserables, after the bishop gives Jean Valjean the silver candlestick, he whispers, Jean Valjean, my brother. You no longer belong to evil. With this silver, I have bought your soul. I've ransomed you from fear and hatred, and now I give you back to God. The bishop's act of substitutionary love shattered Valjean. Likewise, the gift of righteousness shattered the apostle Paul. Jesus bought Paul. He was no longer his own man. He had an entirely new relationship to Jesus and to himself. So faith undermines our need to boast, to constantly defend and display ourselves. It kills the boast. It kills, in principle, a touchy, defensive spirit. Paul makes this point in his letter to the Romans, which Romans 3, 27 through 28 says, Then what becomes of our boasting? Boasting It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. All of God. And it's yeah. not us, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, and and that kind of brings me to the segue of more of the application. And and I'll be honest, I, I felt like that you, you preached on Romans, and then you took us to suffering, which is where we are today. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, okay, are people seeing this as two different sermons? Are we getting kind of two different topics here? But no, there is a glue, and there is a connecting point. And I really felt like you hit on a couple passages, Colossians 2, 6, therefore, mm-hmm. as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. 
And, and if that's not the glue, I'm, I don't know what is, because how did we receive Jesus? Right. How did we receive him? It is through faith and faith alone, Christ alone, you go through those solas. And so how are we to walk in him? How are we to live our life in today's society? How are we to apply this gospel truth mm -hmm. throughout the coronavirus season? Yeah. And, and so I was curious if you wanted to expand on that concept yeah. a little bit more of where we are today in that application. I could have gone to, but I, I, I decided not to because we'll get to it in Romans 8. But mm -hmm. Romans 8 uh, verse 31 says, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us or what can be against us? And it says, he who did not spare his own son, and that's the Romans 3. I mean, that's what we were talking about, redemption, yep. propitiation, the gospel. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he also? Um, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Mm -hmm. For who will lay a charge to God's elect? God's the one who justifies. Mm -hmm. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, was rather raised, who's at the right hand of the Father, who intercedes for us. And then he says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Yeah. So th here's the application of it. It, 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 it. This is the gospel. If God took care of our ultimate bad news, our sin and separation eternally from him, we're living in a lot of days of bad news. In fact, man is born for trouble, like it sparks fly up. So is you know the trouble of his life. But Jesus said in this word, you're going to have tribulation. We should not be surprised. This is a fallen world that it's in the grip of the evil one. Of course, there's going to be right. problems and, and, and tribulations. Um, so we shouldn't be surprised with that. But if he handled our ultimate bad news, our sin through the gospel, hmm. well, okay, we can live through this. We can survive through this. And, uh, and hey, and if we don't, it's a no lose situation for a believer because absent from the body is present with the Lord. And to right. live as Christ and to die is gain. Exactly. Right. He goes before us, he goes behind us, That's he right. hymns us in. Yep. And the next chapter over in 5 8. Yeah. But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So this, he, he's preemptive. He's, he's already done this for us. And, um, I loved the example that you gave about the sailor and he, he's climbing the mast and he is looking down and he's losing his bearings and which ultimately could end his life. Mm -hmm. And the sailors below, yeah, look up, mm -hmm. look up. And mm -hmm. I think that that was such a tangible example of what we need to be doing right now as our retirement funds are gone as yeah. there's no toilet paper something that you as two don't have to worry <laughs> about yet but i do <laughs> as the kids are yeah. climbing the walls whatever the situation is you know or your health yeah. is failing um that rather than looking down and being overwhelmed with and you know, falling to your death in that way but to look up and yeah. see God is what he's done and that yeah. he has gone before us and he's gone by us. He's tempted mm -hmm. sin. He loves us. He's already done this work. My, my son, um, it does videography and he had, um, these next two and a half months all lined up, um, particular sporting events that he participates mm -hmm. in and videos and different things that, that is his livelihood. Yeah. It's all canceled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what was his response? And I'll you know, give him credit um, because it ministered to me. He said, great opportunities, Dad, to know how to trust God deeper. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nothing yeah. like it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, I mean, no income coming in, but great opportunities. And there's yeah. plenty of us who are out there listening that have that, pers mm -hmm. that yeah. who need to have that perspective, yeah. but have that situation right now that and it, things are changing. And it's going to get worse, maybe, yeah. before it gets better. So, I mean, we're, so we're just beginning. That is why Look this up. podcast is here, yep. to, to continue to point us to Christ, to give us that hope. And so, in the words of Caleb, to help land this plane, you know, what is kind of a key phrase or key application point? Alicia, I'll start with you. How would you summarize where we are with this passage? I, I just think it was packed full of fantastic stuff, but I love that. The, our biggest dilemma, Jesus has fulfilled. He solved. God has solved our biggest issue. Um, and there's a quote that just uh, that I'd read by Jen Wilkin, Wilkin, and she writes, "The heart cannot love what the mind does not know." And I have been thinking about that a lot. And for this time of turbulence, 
that our whole world is walking through and we walk through on a micro scale um we we need to be feeding our souls and uh knowing god Mm -hmm. in a deeper way right as we're experiencing these times uh good times and the bad times we need to be cultivating our relationship with the lord and our love is this is a great time for us Mm -hmm. to fall in love deeper with our savior yeah yeah you know for me uh, that 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 little phrase that god can become in in romans 3 that god can become both the just both just and the justifier of him who has faith Mm -hmm. and what is um, encouraging for me going back to what you said it's kind of looking up what do i what what do i need to keep reminding myself or knowing again about god He's got this thing all planned. Yeah. I mean, he, there was no ultimately divine dilemma. God wasn't in a dilemma. He had it all figured out. Um, his holiness, his wrath his, that needed to be satisfied, um, the payment that he had planned, the giving of his son. Um, he ends up, and he says in verse um, 26, this is a demonstration of his righteousness, that he solved our sin problem by being the payment for our sin, satisfying his own righteous holiness. Yep. God had it all figured out. If he could do that, my goodness, he can certainly mm-hmm. solve my little petty issues of life. I, I, what he calls us to is to trust him, right. yep. walk in faith. That is it. I mean, in these opportunities is, is how I see it, yep. of slowing down our life, to <laughs> remove things from us, to... Um, call our attention to see him more clearly in these mm-hmm. times you know we can we can go the opposite direction we can be scared and we can yeah. be anxious and we can look to ourselves or we can look to yeah. him and he is the answer even if you have to learn zoom <laughs> in yes. these troubling times <laughs> uh, good can come from it and yes. and that is hey that is a good thing if we can see how technology can improve yeah. our ministry yeah. and how we share the gospel then it's let's, a gift. let's do it I mean, it really is a gift from god Absolutely. Truly, yep. that we're in this time that we have access to the technology to be able to do this. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. So, guys, continue to um, go to our website for all of you FBC members listening, fbcva.life. As Mark mentioned earlier, day-to-day updates will be coming as far as where we are with our ministry here at FBC, um, whether it be worship services, whether it be community groups, whether it be congregational care. There's all kinds of needs and, um, and areas where we will be updating you on a regular basis so look for those things and um you know just to kind of wrap this time up guys um did you have any well, i was just gonna say do you know how many people uh logged into the do you have yeah oh, two thousand people listened and watched our worship service this past weekend yeah that's so that's, that's a, that is yeah. great so continue to share it and it doesn't yeah. have to be just fbc members who are watching and listening right and, and don't forget that fbcva.life slash give <laughs> still yes. still need to give yeah. yes and because yeah, the the bills are still coming the salaries still need to be paid and it's not yeah. our money it's god's yeah yep so good point thank you so the fact of the matter guys is that sermons are not meant to take an hour but rather transform a lifetime so until next week much love and god bless <laughs>